happened. So slowing down for this person. Actually going around them, that was a bold move. Oh, beautiful! Yes, they fixed it! You're slowing down in the middle of the intersection. Not good. Hey, what's up everybody? Today is Tuesday. I'm running a little bit behind on videos. I had some videos from Friday that I had to post. Didn't get a chance to get them up over the weekend. I do have a video from yesterday where I traveled all the way up to Milwaukee and back down. That's going to be coming up soon. But first of all, today I'm going to rush to put out a video on 10.5. It came in at 2 a.m. last night. First things first, I need to take the car over to the service center because I have a small little issue with my front passenger door. What happens is it makes some noise. So here, check it out. When I close it, all right, so we're gonna see what is new here. I'm gonna go into the software menu, and if I scroll down, you can see 10.5, FSD beta 10.5. And it looks like everything is disabled in here. Let me just go to the release notes really quick. All right, so 10.5, which would be all of this stuff here on the top. There's a full self-driving beta terms, so it does look like you need to turn it back on again. Uh, full self-driving beta suspension. It looks like there's some release notes here, and then some autopilot improvements, driving visualization improvements, and cabin camera autopilot improvements, and then finally, sentry mode live camera access. Some of these have been rolled over from the previous update into here. I think the key point here is the 10.5 release notes. So I will pause on this screen so everybody can read what uh, the update brings. And I'm gonna go back into the menu system here and go to autopilot and turn full self-driving beta on. It looks like I do need to agree to these terms again. I'll make lane changes off highway select forks. And Kevin, by enabling FSD beta, I consent to Tesla's collection of VIN associated image data. So I'm gonna say yes and yes. And also there's a warning. So obviously, you know, you don't wanna abuse the system. If you do, you will get a warning and there's only one warning and then you're out. All right, so we are all set. I am one of the very lucky people that has a Tesla dealer or service center a mile away from my house. This opened up after I got the car, so I was I was super excited when it opened. So I'm gonna dial it in, and we are good to go. So here we go. We're starting the trip. All right, slowing down for that car just very briefly there. And here's a person. So slowing down for this person. Actually, going around them. That was a bold move. I couldn't believe it did that. Never seen that before. And coming up here to the red light, where it's gonna turn right. Turning on the right turn signal, and we're gonna see if it creeps up the same as it has before. Right now I have zero visibility, I cannot see to the left. Okay, there we go, it is clear. Very good. Yes, there was plenty of space there, that was well done. Okay, so I'm gonna drop off the car, and then I'm probably gonna get a loaner. I'll try to document here the experience, but I've taken my car to the service center a number of different times, all for little minor things. So the cars do come with a 50,000 mile warranty, or I think it's uh, five years. It's a limited warranty. So I'm still covered under warranty, and I'm gonna take advantage of that. Here we go, going around this car, and then slowing down right in the middle of the lane. Thankfully, nobody's behind me, but that was a very strange maneuver there. Don't know. I mean, I would have done that as a human, but I don't know why it was in that left lane to begin with. Pro probably maybe because the service center is up here on the left. So it is gonna have to get in front of this truck here. Okay, getting in the left lane. And we're gonna see if it can cut across this median it's a pretty large median here slowing down in the middle of the intersection not good i let it do it a little bit but should never have done that i had to accelerate through the intersection that has not been fixed with 10.5 okay and what i was saying is that it's a very tricky left turn here so usually what i do when i'm manually driving is i go forward one you just see where, where this is yeah it actually has us going forward and then doing a u-turn so here again, we're gonna see if it can do a U-turn. It failed to do a U-turn on Friday. So I'm not sure if that was a particular spot where it just couldn't do it or overall it can't do it. So we're gonna find out here. Okay, needs to be getting in the left lane. There we go. So there we just passed the dealer. And now it's going to 
turn on the left turn signal. Unable to complete maneuver. Please assist now. So here, here it's and actually it's putting on the right turn signal. So it cannot do U-turns. I'm going to call it on that right now because that's two that it, it just has never been able to do correctly. So I am manually driving here and have to take over. Okay, here we go. All right, and we'll turn it back on. Okay, and then it should turn into the, into the Tesla lot here. Okay, great. So I will go around the corner here and then run on into the service center. So sometimes you get that, it'll say press the brake pedal to go in reverse. If you're going really slow or if you are just starting out, you typically don't need to hit the brake pedal. And that's one nice thing I like is you can kind of seamlessly go forward in reverse. Here, I'll show you really quick. So going forward and then immediately while it's going forward, I don't even let my foot off the accelerator. It can go in reverse. I love that. And then forward, as long as you're under five miles an hour, it will do that. All right, so since we're here, we're gonna check out some of these cars. This is the newer Model 3. The console's changed compared to mine. Looks like I did get the newer rev seats, which is a good thing. Oh, here's a Y with the top rack on there, that looks nice. I've actually never been inside of a Y before. Nice back seats there. Looks like another Y over here. Just Y's and 3's in here. Just see if they changed anything with the, with the trunks. Oh yes, so it has a power. It actually lifts all by itself. That's nice. The model, my Model Three, doesn't do that. So if I start to close it, let's see if there's a button on here. Yeah, there's a little button right here. That's nice. Yeah, mine definitely doesn't have that included. Let's just see here again now. If the, uh, I'm going to push it again, it opens up, that's nice. And here it looks like they've corrected this lip. So they finally did take all the feedback into, into account. Water will come down, it'll hit this lip, it's, a, it's notched. So that is definitely an improvement over my model. All right, so they gave me an Uber voucher through the Tesla app. I'm gonna go in there and apply it and head straight back home and get some work done here. All right, so I'm here to pick up my Model 3 and apparently the door guards or the door check uh, had, unit had to get replaced. So we're gonna take a look here. All right, so I was having issues with the front passenger door as well. So let's open it up. Oh, it's super quiet. I'm not hearing any sounds at all. That's really nice. Okay, let's come on over on the other side. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and test this door here as well. And here's the unit that I believe they replaced. That little bracket there that holds the door. So yeah, 
it's uh, very smooth now, no issues. All right, so we are off. I'm gonna. I have my, my destination dialed in. I want to give a huge shout out to Estavo in the service center. He did a fantastic job taking care of me. Set me up with an Uber. It was a quick drive back and forth to my home. So we're gonna see if full self driving beta can get me all the way out here, starting from the parking lot. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive and wait for the steering wheel. I don't need to do anything from here. It should be able to get out and find its way. So here's a lady coming in real slow with a handicap sticker on her car, driving a Model S. Okay, and some people coming in front of me. Here we go, I'm gonna turn it on. All right, it's taking off. My video stopped working there. I'm not sure what happened, but it keeps cutting itself out. Okay, here we go, turning left. Here's what the new tires look like. They turned out really nice. I am very pleased with them so far. I have had no issues with them. They're super smooth. They're not as quiet as the original OEM tires, but they have great tread life and they're supposed to last 40,000 miles. I think that's the warranty. All right, so we're off. I'm gonna be stopping by the store on my way to the office here. So a quick stop at Target. Should be interesting to see if it pulls into the parking lot. This intersection is coming up with Golf and Higgins, and this is where it continually screws up. We're gonna see if it can do it successfully here with version 10.5. Oh, it's doing it! Look at that, it just got in the right lane! That's the first time ever it got over early! Very nicely done, wow, okay, first time. Okay, it's braking unexpectedly there, but oh, beautiful, yes, they fixed it. Oh, that's so great to see. Okay, this is what I live for here, is to see the improvements with full self-driving beta. That was beautiful, it's never done that in the past month that I've been testing. 10.3, 10.3.1, 10.4, none of those would do that turn correctly, and now it fixed it. That is so nice makes me so happy okay that's one thing I don't need to worry about anymore because I take that route all the time every single day so one thing I'm probably gonna post after this video because I wanted to rush to get this 10.5 video released out on YouTube but yesterday I went and drove all the way to Milwaukee to pick up our collaborative robot so I can do a demonstration of the robot helping for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna have the robot, thanks to one of my customer's suggestions, serving desserts for a Thanksgiving meal that we're having over at their place. They are hosting this Thanksgiving dinner. They are so nice and so kind to do that every year. The best customer we have. They're, they're really great to work with. But we're gonna be taking the robot over there and setting it up so it can serve desserts to everybody. It'll be a lot of fun. And then that video will probably go on our company's YouTube channel and social media. So a lot of fun working with this robot. But I'll tell you, yesterday when I was taking it back from Milwaukee, there was a braking event that scared the crap out of me. And I disabled it for the entire rest of the drive home. So not a whole lot of footage there. <laughs> but uh, I was worried the airbags would deploy because the entire robot, I mean, I didn't have it tied down very well and I, I don't have a method to really do that very well. Surprisingly, it actually fits in my car, but the whole thing came flying forward and, and slammed into these driver seats. I was so thankful nothing broke or got damaged, but oh wow, you know, definitely don't want to use full self-driving beta when you have precious or especially very heavy cargo in the back that's not fastened down. Definitely watch out for that one. So yeah, the rest of today for me is stopping by the store to pick up some uh, items for this robot demo and then the afternoon programming the robot and then tomorrow deploying it and enjoying a nice meal and some drinks. It'll be a lot of fun, great company. I'm really looking forward to that. 
and still want to hear what everybody's doing for Thanksgiving. So let me know in the comments. I will be uh, later tomorrow night driving from the northwest suburbs of Chicago all the way over to Michigan, which is where my parents live. Okay, so coming up here, it's gonna get in the right turn lane, and then we're gonna see if it can take us into the Target parking lot. It has done this before. I have not had any issues here. Sometimes it gets over a little bit late. Okay, it needs to get over right now. Okay, very, very well. That's good timing. There's nobody really behind us. I always keep an eye on that, because if there was, I'd probably be pushing it forward a little bit faster than it's going right now. Now somebody's coming up behind us. And we're gonna go right at this light here. Okay, it's green. Accelerating into the turn. Okay, very well done. Now it needs to get in the left lane really quickly. There we go, very well done. And then here in the left turn lane once again. Good job, wow, that was very nicely done. It's slowing down to turn here. Okay, and there's a car coming, so it sees that car. And he's saying, he's motioning for me to go. So I'm gonna step on the accelerator to tell it to go. That was really well done. Um, so I did have to intervene. There's that, again, that human interaction that you can never be prepared for. At least the full self-driving beta software can never be prepared for that. And I'm gonna take over here because as of today, the car will not go and park itself. So I do need to do that manually. So I'm gonna run in, pick up some plates to serve these desserts on, and then I will be right back. So here I am at a Target. I'm going to take the car all the way from here and see if it can take me to the office. One thing that I did see is that there's a new update getting pushed out to the owners that don't have full self-driving beta. And you are now able to do waypoints, which is awesome. That's been asked for for a very long time. I would love to have that capability, but I just gave it a test here. And I can confirm without a doubt that full self-driving beta 10.5 does not have waypoints. And you may be wondering, well, what is full self-driving beta software and what is the version? The version is 2021.36.8.8. All right, so here we go. I am in the parking lot and it allows me to, when I put it into drive, it will allow me to turn on full self-driving beta. So we're gonna see if it can take me all the way from this parking spot out of the parking lot. It looks like it's not showing up for some reason. I think it's having a hard time seeing the path in front of it. It looks around. Okay, here it comes. So it took a little while there. I think it may be because I had an update done, but now you can see the different colored objects showing up. And I think it's still a little bit confused. It is not quite sure how to get out of this spot here. So maybe if I give it just a tiny bit more time, let's see if it can find itself here. Uh, I'm not seeing it uh, recognize where it is. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna step on the accelerator just a tiny bit, move it just a little tiny bit. I think there's a car on my on my left side that's blocking the view of the, of the vehicle here. So if I go forward now and let go, let's see if it shows up anything. Still nothing. Okay, interesting. So. Most of the time when you're in a parking spot and you're facing facing forward, you can enable full self-driving beta. So keep an eye open here for a little, there it is, there's the steering wheel icon. So I'm gonna pause right when it shows up. It is showing me there's a P symbol. So that means I can park the car. And I can demonstrate that really quickly, actually since I'm right here in the parking lot. So to park the car, see there's two cars now. I'm gonna back up here so you, everybody can see really quickly. This parking lot's pretty quiet. But as you can see, there's two cars right here. Okay, so I'm gonna park right in between them and I'm gonna put on my drive. So it's gonna go forward and it sees the, it's gonna see this gap. You have to get close enough to the cars for it to be able to do this. And then as soon as it's, you pass by the second car, a little P icon in it will show up. And it just showed up, I missed the opportunity. I'm gonna back up again. Again, there's nobody in this parking lot right now, so it's gonna work out really well. There, I just saw the one by the shopping cart rack. Now, I would be hesitant, hesitant to test that because the, there have been times where the cameras won't pick up poles in the parking lot. So it's better not to do that test, in my opinion. Okay, now I'm looking for this P symbol to show up here again and it looks like it's still missing it. So this is something that happens on occasion where you do have to kind of rock it back and forth to get it to recognize the spot. 
So usually if you're coming up on this spot, it will detect it just fine. I've been moving around and adjusting the camera so you, you can have a good view at this gap. So that's probably why it's not doing anything here. But I'm gonna back up again. And again, I'm keeping an eye on, you can see the backup cameras, there's nobody behind me. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna move it forward here. Oh, they're gonna take my spot. Oh, no, they're taking the one right in front of it. Thank goodness, okay, great. That spot is still open. So I'm gonna come forward here. And right after I pass the second one, there's the P symbol. I tap on it. Oh, and I missed it again. Okay, you guys, we're gonna have to test that another time. Oh, wow. Okay, oh, there it is. Come on, okay, there it sees it. Okay, shift to reverse. And so shift to reverse, press the brake, shift to reverse, and start. Okay, so we're gonna get out of this lady's way because she just parked. And it's gonna back into this spot here. So I did have to go a little bit further forward. That surprised me. I thought uh, it would have detected it or allowed me to press it sooner and I kept thinking I was missing it. So here it's gonna automatically move the steering wheel. As you can see the steering wheel doing its thing. It's gonna even itself out and then park itself. Okay, so that's that's uh, the self-park feature. And now once we're in this spot, I can turn it on to drive and I'm gonna wait for the steering wheel icon to show up. There, oh, there it was and then where there it went away. So as soon as this path can kind of weave its way out enough, it'll be able to go. So um, it sees that person over there by the car, as you can see. I'll zoom in so there's the person now walking and they're gonna go into the store so now I'm just gonna tap double tap down and so there it went off again so it'll go on and off here's a lady coming on my right looks like she's just getting back from shopping here so I'm going to get this all set here again okay so we are all set to go I'm gonna wait for this lady to put some of her stuff into their car. She's kind of right in the way here, but that's not a problem, not in any, in any rush, just cutting into my lunchtime here. Okay, so as soon as she gets off her phone, puts her baby in the car, and ideally, and most likely her shopping bags in the car, I'm gonna go. So I'm just gonna tap it down, let's see how it handles this. I'm really close to this lady, but it is letting me turn it on. It's gonna creep forward. Very risky to do that with that lady there. Um, and almost hitting the rack there. So it definitely had to take over there. Um, <laughs> you just can never trust what's going to happen. That's the thing. So it probably would have made it. Maybe I need to have more faith in it. I don't know, but those, those racks are very dangerous in parking lots and poles as well. So if you use Smart Summon and there's a pole in the parking lot, you're asking for trouble. So try to stay away from poles. Uh, I almost had a big accident with that, but whew, knock on wood, I still have yet to have any accidents with, in this car. So I should turn it on. Okay, so there's lots of people here. I'm gonna wait for the symbol to come back on and I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. I went automatically into my normal manual driving just because I am a courteous driver. I'm sorry to say. I it, I really take heart to how other people react to my driving and I don't want to annoy people. And that's one thing I, I will refuse to do, even though, even if it's legal and the car is not doing anything illegal, I'm still going to take over if it's doing something really stupid. And that's, I think, important for all the beta testers that are new to testing is that you know you should really intervene and disengage as much as possible. That's what I'm learning here after testing it for a month. But overall, I'm very pleased with 10.5. Like I said, it's been operating very well here on this short trip so far. I 
keep thinking I have to disengage here because I'm so used to the old software. So here it is, turning right, no problems whatsoever. Car coming up behind me. All right, nicely done slowing down for this car coming out. Okay, this is gonna be a tight fit between this semi and this other car. Slowing down, not giving them enough space in my opinion. And then, oops, slowing down for him there as well. And then trying to go left, which is the wrong direction. So it always gets this GPS wrong, so I have to put in the incorrect destination. All right, so uh, we'll see you guys probably when it's dark out. All right, hey guys, the robot is all programmed. We are all set for the Thanksgiving feast tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Then a drive all the way to Michigan. Here we are in my work parking lot. I'm going to take the car and see if it can get me all the way home. I have to navigate out of here because the GPS data is off, so I do have to drive manually just to, to start to get out of here. So we'll go on up here, and as soon as the map data refreshes itself to the correct path, then, oh, there it is. So there the correct path is now on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and it's gonna go around this curb. Please keep your hands on the wheel. Okay, so it's going slow here, accelerating through, okay. Very nice, it did not hit the curb, and it's going around this truck that's parked on the side of the street. Here comes another car, and going around them, no problems there. And now this is gonna be a very tricky left turn. So it's 5.14 p.m., and this is normally rush hour, but it's an odd time of the year. So, you know, most people are not working anymore. So we're gonna see, okay, there's two, three cars on the right, and five cars coming on the left. So. I'm gonna be taking over here, ready to take over. So it really needs to wait now. There's two cars on the left, and then after that, we're good to go. See here, coming one more car, and now we're good to go. Go, 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 this is the time. I'm gonna push it forward. Need to intervene there. Hopefully that data makes it back to the, I was gonna say the mothership, but hopefully that data makes it back to Tesla. <laughs> I, I really hope and trust that they're using that feedback, but yeah, definitely it should have gone there. I am happy at least now that they're releasing a lot more details in the release notes and they still won't post anything about bug fixes. I mean, it's not like we need to know what bug fixes are being fixed, especially when it comes to this kind of, um, I don't know how you describe it, like behavioral, see here and I, I need to intervene again to take over because it's going on the round, wrong route. But yeah, it takes takes upon different behaviors at different times. It kind of has a mind of its own. So it's hard to know and predict where it's gonna go. So these bug fixes are hardly noticeable now, but initially when I got the car in 2019, you could see some progress. It was very linear. And now I would say it's kind of this, uh, so I studied haptics in college and haptics is where it's kind of an electromechanical signal and you can program haptics so that you have a, a force that ops that acts in an opposite direction to where your hand or where the physical world is impelling torque or, or force onto the different moments and that haptics experience is very similar to what you see happening on the steering wheel. So it's just one massive PID algorithm that's trying to stabilize into a turn and follow a path. You can kind of look at it as a PID. PID it would be more long-term uh, stabilization. It's Let's just put it this way, it's a fine-tuned PID. And for those that you don't, don't know what PID is, it's tuning the proportional, the proportional, the integral, and the derivative and you can tune all those. So I'm driving manually just because I had to get past that route issue and there was a car coming there that would have been a good test, but I'm gonna turn it on now. It's easier in certain situations to run in manual mode because your, your mind is just so used to doing it smoothly and naturally. And to have full self-driving beta driving for you, it takes a lot of focus, it takes a lot of concentration. It's actually a lot easier to film and talk when I'm driving manually, to be honest with you. So there it just broke, braked, broke, broke, braked for that car there that was parked. Ooh, it's slowing down quite a bit there. So it really, really got afraid. I was not a fan of that. That has never happened. That would be a regression if you, see that's the thing. That exact 
specific situation has not occurred on any of my other commutes home. So I can't really compare it to anything to say that it's worse. But certainly since that's never happened before, I'm gonna go on a limb and say that that was worse. <laughs> Probably not true, but it really should not have braked there. So here again, it's gonna take Schaumburg Road, and I'm very familiar with that path. Let's see if we can challenge it a little bit more to go on a busier road. So I'm gonna cancel again. This is what I would normally do when I'm driving home. And it's really nice because I used to cancel entirely out of full self-driving beta by pushing up on the right drive stock or hitting the brake. But now what I found is you can just cancel the destination and it won't turn where it was originally going to turn. So it's just gonna keep going straight here. In parking lots, I've observed some unusual behavior. It will turn left right when you don't expect it to, for example. It kind of changes its mind very frequently, I would say, inside of parking lots. It's much more certain on these roads, but it's that verge between certainty and uncertainty that requires some tuning. And it's not easy to get that. And you know, you don't want it to be over overactive or overreactive. And you also don't want it to be too underreactive. So it's a balance. All right, so we're turning left here on Higgins and then it should be a straight shot pretty much from there. This is a little bit of a busier road, like I said, so it's gonna be more interesting, a little bit more dynamic. So the light just turned green and it's gonna come up here and go through the intersection. It's gonna follow these other cars. It's another thing that I always wonder is, is it following those cars or is it looking at lines on the road or is it doing both? It's, obviously it's also using the map data, but I'm not sure how it does these turns so well if it's following or not. And in, in reality, you should never follow or trust someone in front of you because they could do some random thing at any given time. So you can't trust that that path is gonna be correct. But I think you can assign a certain degree of certainty and then balance it out among other factors and then combine or blend them to create a, uh, a decision. And that decision has to be adjusted in the moment. And you'll notice that while it's making the turn, the steering wheel is jittering. And I think that's because it's seeing a lot of things and weighing the certainty versus uncertainty and then making that split second decision. So I am dialed in for 50 miles an hour. It's going 35, 36. It's following this other car in front of me and it's they're going awfully slow. And usually I'd be like that car there in the middle if I was driving manually, just kind of getting in front. I always try to get as far in front as I can. <laughs> but it's like Tetris. Whenever I'm driving, it's like Tetris. I'm not that annoying block that makes it a last minute decision and cuts in front of all the other blocks. But definitely I try to stay as, as far up as I can as I'm driving and I try to avoid slow traffic. Okay, so it's changing lanes, which is an interesting move. There's not really too many people be behind me. So I would agree with that decision. That's what I would have done just much earlier. All right, and coming on up here. Okay, car changing lanes in front of me. The car did not react or overreact. Here now it's trying to change left to follow route. So it, it put on its blinker and this person behind this car is giving me a chance. They're leaving a gap. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's allowing me to change lanes. That was pretty well done, I would say. So it definitely needed to get in the left lane and coming up here, we're gonna be turning left. So we're gonna see how well it, it pulls into the left lane. It has come up here in the past and missed this. So we're gonna see what happens here. Okay, it needs to go right now, right now. It's too late, so this is too late. Yeah, it really should have done it much, much sooner than that. So it's a green arrow. We're gonna see if it can make it all the way through. This is a tough intersection. Left blinker is on. It did screw this up in the past. Okay, hopefully it's looking at the lines. Oh, and the yellow light, okay. And it's trying to, again, get into the left lane there and 
It also wanted to stop in the middle of the intersection. I had to intervene and push forward because it was about to stop on that red light. So I'm gonna have to slow down manually here because, so this is out of courtesy. I'm not gonna annoy the other driver. So that was a disengagement and I hope that you track that. So I pushed up on the right drive stalk. I really should have hit the brake pedal and that's what I need to get in the habit of because I think definitely those occurrences make it over to Tesla. Oh, it looks like an accident here. Bummer. That's not good. There's a lot of fluids on the on the street. I think it was their radiator fluid. All right. So yes, you know, disengagements for courtesy are highly acceptable in my book. So that was wrong. It tried to go over there. If, it, if I hadn't been paying attention and it hadn't changed back into the lane, that could have been a really big disaster. <laughs> Definitely feels like you're, you're driving with a, a driver's ed student. Okay, I'm letting up because I'm going to creep through here. I know I can. This car in front of me is, but that would have been a good test. But again, I'm not going to annoy people around me. So there's another person right behind me. And some people would be just a jerk about that and let the car, oh, let's see what it does. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to clown around like that during rush hour traffic. People are super impatient. And they don't have any time. So what ends up happening is you have to rush along and the gap was there. The car would not have gone for it. I'm going to tell you that right now. It would have tried, but it would have taken too long. Let me re-clarify what I'm trying to say here. The car takes too long to do things, and you cannot be patient enough when you have a lot of traffic around. So it's unfortunate that you can't see it put to the true test, but that's good feedback from what I'm understanding. So Kim, um, oh, what's her name? Kim Phuket or something like that. She's on Twitter. Um, I follow her. And she was saying that disengagements and taking over provide better feedback than letting it do what it's trying to do. So <laughs> that's probably a really good point. I mean, I, it's not probably. It is a really good point. It makes complete sense. I'm just always so curious to see how far it is. So, And that's the thing. I think most beta testers that are maybe, maybe you have to be a bit of a geek like me to test it and to, let, to limit, to understand its capabilities. And that's why I'm doing these videos so that everybody can understand where the software is at. Yeah, I'm turning it back on right now. And the rest of this is gonna be a piece of cake, but that's 10.5. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next video and please subscribe and smash the like button.